Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, uh, once again coming upon you talking about this time quaternions and how we can use quaternions to rotate things and in this case it may not seem like we're doing quaternions but in effect if when you look at the values that are keyed in uh, in the SketchUp when you're doing rotations using the rotate tool and then when we dig down into Ruby code to do the same thing you'll realize that in effect is what is being abstracted into uh, the program. So we're going to start again with drawing our little triangle, you know, by a uh, seems of odd. We're going to basically remember we always go to our window, make sure our model is set up, remembering that in SketchUp for some reason everything is based on the base unit of the inches and that's not going to change. It's one of the oddities that this was developed by architects. Start arbitrary at a point there and then key into our source point. First point using a hard bracket. We had that was one in the X. I'm sorry, zero in the X zero on the Y and one in the Z that takes us there. Now we're just then gonna go out here again and click and that's some oddity I'll try to check and then we're gonna go to one in the X, zero in the Y and zero in the Z and close that hard bracket again and come back out here again and then tally it back to where we want it to be which is hard bracket of zero, one, zero think that gets us all three of those places and then we'll go back out here we're gonna now zoom and see that we in fact do have those three points and I'm just now gonna draft here to there from there to there from there to there and they'll you'll see later on how it's much easier to code this than it might be to draft it and there's probably a more direct way of doing this we have that general face and you can see that that face was the way it was done I don't know why this is actually turned that way but I'm going to now right click and then reverse faces so you kind of got the white face up on top here I'm now going to go across the top of that right click and I'm going to make a component but when I do that I'm going to get pretty good anytime I make a component to set the component axes and in this case I'm going to put the component axis to be the same all right, I'm going to get the same as the general axis. So I'm once again clicking over the top. I'm going to make a component. I'm going to set my component axis basically for a good form, right? And I'm just going to call that component one. So that just makes things stick together a little bit nicer later on. You can see that lets me replace on a fly. And what I wanted to do then, if you remember, was rotate this 30 degrees. And so the way I can do that in SketchUp is click on that grab, holding the shift key to hold my face, click on my rotation point, which was the origin, origin. hitting control so I get a, a um, so I get a copy and I'm going to type in 30, which is the same as pi over 6. All right, so now what I have is a two of those and that was pretty good. I kind of like that. That was cool, but I'm going to go here and go edit, uh, undo, rotate, and just try it. Now I'm going to do it 12 times, so I'm going to click on here and holding the shift key until I get where I want, hitting the control key, going 30, and then saying 12 times. So nothing else, I get something pretty neat, right? From looking in the outside at least, look on there, and you get the concept of some other shape here, which is a kind of a folded shape from the outside. Later on, you can kind of do some cuts and and think about the strength that would be there and <clears throat> and how you can very quickly accumulate by basic rotations and, and the like um, this ability to um, kind of rotate shapes based on some relatively um, straightforward mathematics. Now I could of course keep going on this and then take this and once again right click and make it a component and I would once again want to be very good about how I set my component axes up. I'm going out here, hitting an escape. I might go to there in the X and there to the Y. And I'm going to call that component 2. Now I am doing something called recursion, if you want to think of it that way. And I might, just for grins, go out here and draft a box and push up the box. And then just for grins, I might take that and go out here, hold the shift key, hopefully get down on the axis there, hold the shift key there, 
and hold my control key here and once again go 30 degrees and then go 12 times and you can start to see how the mathematics of satellites and robots starts to accumulate by something called recursion by recursion so what you see I'm gonna go back now right edit undo edit undo edit undo edit undo and I could just be doing Control Z or Alt Z. Control Z is usually edit undo. All right, so I'm back to here, and what I really wanted to do was to just rotate these points by 30 deg 30 degrees, and that's just to review it one more time. I grab the face, I grab the tool, I hold the Shift key. Once I have the plane, I go to my center of rotation. I click here, I hit control, and I say 30, and I've rotated every point 30 degrees about the axis to find. In this case, of course, the center one isn't going to rotate at all, and these others are just kind of rotating about a circle. Said circle being the same circle, if you would. So these points are actually revolving around, just describe circle around here. So if I would actually go ahead and draw a circle, something like that to there, you can see that this is all going to just rotate about that circle. So Working with a unit of one helps students to start an understanding that all circles are the units circle making made bigger or smaller. When you get into the code of this and realize what it looks like, and we'll do that right now if we can, you'll see why in fact you can start building these skills, at least for cognizance of students, that it's really just some basic manipulation and then dig backwards towards the matrices. So I'm going to go into plugins here, Rudy Cove Editor. And we'll take a look at what this starts to look like. And you can start with, remember we talked early somewhere about P0. Let me go P, I'll use the number 0, equals geom point 3D dot new. And then generally learning to put stuff in vectors. The first one was, remember, 0, 0, 1 right close the bracket close the function this is a function call right. it's a, a a method for the class of a gm point 3d that's going to make one and then we could do a number of different ways but we're going to go with p1 equals gm point 3d dot new and then this was going to be 1 comma 0 comma 0 close the bracket starting to see how you have to get good at having your brain get around the different formats that that programs used to deal with vectors but vectors are and matrices are in fact how most of the computer science use of lists is going to work at least in a 3d spatial world p2 is equal to gm point 3d dot new and in this case it was 0 comma 1 comma 0 All right so we just now describe three points and at the risk of having it wrong here we can do something like ent dot add line and we're going to call this edge 1 So we'll say E1 equals add and the add line and we're going to go P0 comma P1 and then E2 equals ent dot add line and that would be the same as an edge of P1 comma P2 and then E and we're going to make this bore correct here E0 and E1, remember we started to index things, and then this is going to be E2 equals ent dot add line P2 comma P0. And in the end, we could also do ent F0 equals ent dot add face P1 
P zero comma P one comma P two. Now this in the end won't necessarily all work, but that's the first general bit when you can start to see how terming things and how these things start to work. Very often what I'm going to do is write these things out a little bit more because I had an issue with this. Um, but you've defined your groups in terms of your collections. One is the model, one is the set of entities, and one is the selection set. So if I'm going to go ahead and right now with that open, I'm going to go back here and see if I can, I'm taking that off to the side, but I'm going to go over here now and see if I can select everything here, edit cut, and I'm going to see if I can debug this as we speak. So I have that there. First time through that generally never works, but boy, it seems like it did it here. And so it, it did a pretty nice job. So it actually, first time through, I was okay, but now we can do it this way. There is a command for rotating, and that is we're going to rotate, and we're going to define the rotation this way. R rotation 1 is equal to GM transformation dot new. And this transformation can be determined can be defined many ways, but generally it's a point of the center of the rotation or the transformation. It's a vector, in this case our vector was 0, 0, 1, and then it's an angle, and in this case our angle, do this off the top of my head, if it was 30 degrees, it would be pi over 6, which is around 3, 6, it's about a half of a radian. So I'm just going to say 0 0.5 because I'm too, what I could do is put PI slash 6, but I'm not sure effectively how that works in this. I'll just try it, PI slash 6. Right, so that defines the rotation. And then you can do it like this, ent.transform entities. And then what you do is you tell it the name of the transformation, so R1, and then the list of the entities, which in this case is F0. So this should work, except for the caveat there. I'm going to once again, we put it all together. I'm going to go back here, right click. This is all in Ruby with the SketchUp Ruby API. We're going to run this. It's probably not going to work, but it looks like it did not so let's see why when you start debugging you go to tools Ruby console and you look to see what happens and it'll usually tell you that there was a problem there and there's where I thought it was so it was basically I closed it incorrectly we're gonna go back here and close that with the parentheses and you try it again and it actually you got it true there so you're feeling a little bit better and if you look over here, looks like it did it for us, didn't it? So I'm going to go through that. Finally, the last thing we'll do then is going to rotate, go back and actually look at the quaternion math, but I want to show you why this is of interest to each of you. Remember, all kinds of different ways to go about doing it. Code.org is all about coding. Coding is about cool, neat stuff about Hello World, but it's also about dealing with space and space is 3D, 4D, 5D, and we need to get our minds wrapped around that. So this, basically, the set of Ruby code, you define the model, you told that there were some things in it, and then perhaps you were going to select things with it. You define points as 3D points that were defined new, right? So P0, P1, and P2, and they had an X, Y, and a Z. You define the edges or the lines as they were. You define the face as it was. And then in the end, you define a transformation defined by a origin point, a unit vector in the direction of the axis of spin, and then a value of the rotation. This is very close to the inputs to a quaternion, and that's how the math goes. Thanks for listening. We'll do one more video showing how this is done by hand.